It's the first Monday in May, and just like the weather, my mood is changing every 30 seconds. One minute I'm elated, then I'm depressed, then I hate Keir Starmer, then I realise I hate Boris Johnson much, much more. My man and my feelings are on this constant seesaw waiting to be taken hostage every time the BBC alerts me that this government have, or more notably, haven't done something to stop this virus, to end the impeding climate crisis, to help eradicate the epidemic of child poverty in this country. I've been creating blogs for over a year now. I created blogs to platform and give a voice to the myriad and complex lives of the people I live with or I love. The people who I've been surrounded by who gave me my ambition all of my lives. But the more I do these blogs, the more I feel I'm not making any impact at all. I feel that I am just creating a deeper echo chamber filled with activists who are just as anxious and worried as I am. When you're an activist, it's very difficult to know where to place your heart, how to fight for the right team, how to make real sustained impact, especially if you're living on a breadline and information is scarce and access to the internet is a real struggle. I have fucked up many, many, many times and I continue to do so. If I had a Twitter account that had any more followers, I'm sure I would be seriously cancelled. I've spent the last six months training my mum to drink oat milk so we can save the planet, only to then find out months later when I had my internet back that Oatly eh, are sponsoring the climate crisis by supporting the Donald Trump campaigns. I then cry in absolute jubilance and tell everyone the amazing news that China have a net zero policy by 2050, which is incredible, only to then find out that they are on course to have the highest emissions ever this year. It feels like you cannot do right for doing wrong. And it feels like wherever you go as an activist, there is always something that is damaging. It is difficult to be discerning when your resources are limited. So I do what any person who is Gen Z does when met with a crisis. I go to Tesco and I buy a bottle of cheap white wine, which at the moment is the net. But I hear that they're inflating their prices and that's absolutely chaos because I won't be able to afford that either soon. I then also got an email from Greenpeace saying that Tesco are responsible for torching precious forests so I can't even shop at fucking Tesco anymore to calm my anxiety via white wine. It feels like you can't do right for doing wrong because every step of the way it feels like there are titan forces that are built fortified with money clipped files and generational wealth that belong in massive manor houses in the Cotswolds. So how the fuck do we with limited resources fight the good fight? It became clear to me over the pandemic that the only way I could fight these titan forces was to get offline and rather get inside communities and understand their heartache and their heartbreaks. When I first started working with Church Action on Poverty, my activism took a completely different turn. I sat with a cup of tea, which I have now, and my mum's pyjamas, which a year later I'm still wearing. And I listened as Felix Mufti spoke about being a trans boy in poverty. I listened when Janine Riley, a fellow working classer, gave me free therapy sessions because I couldn't afford any of my own. Or I listened to the lived experience of people like Penny or Matt or Matt Sowerby in his incredibly innovative poetry as he tackles the climate crisis via his Instagram. Activists create safe spaces wherever they go. And when the world took refuge in hand sanitizer and conspiracy theories and flocked indoors, Church Action became a safe virtual space for many stories that were left silent in the pandemic. Stories that were unplatformed and unaided. Over the past year in the pandemic, activists in Church Action on Poverty have done an incredible job at pulling up where the government have fell short. But now that the world is opening back up again, how do we meet the crisis where it's at? And I've got some ideas. How do we create a movement that is respectable and at the very essence of it has inclusivity and has dignity? As we go out into the world, we must accept that the world has changed and therefore so should our activism. We cannot rely on traditional measures if we are going to make sustained impact. As we go out, we will see that millions more of us have plunged into poverty. We are sitting on the precipice of a climate disaster as our government and even the opposition, the Labour Party, are becoming increasingly right wing. We need to do more. We need protests that bring along everybody, especially those of us that are digitally excluded. 
We need to understand that poverty doesn't have an image, it doesn't have an accent, and it definitely doesn't have a profession. We need to build stylish protests that centre young people. We need to lobby governments, MPs and decision makers in the same way that Marcus Rashford does. We need to positively frame the stories of those living in poverty and treat their activism with as much reverence and iconism that we do Love Island contestants. I mean, I don't, I don't watch Love Island. We need to not distinguish in schools between those on free school meals is uh, benefiting from pupil premium and those without. We need to not ask for evidence when somebody needs food, water or clothing in the middle of a fucking pandemic. We need to platform authentic voices constantly. We need to get rid of the cliches of Benefit Street or the polite wokeness of middle class guardian journalism or middle class um, charity workers. We need to make sure that our staff are filled with people who have wide ranging, authentic lived experience if we are going to tackle poverty in a way that is nuanced and in a way that is respectable. It is time to tell the real lived experience of those surviving scarcity and show that our lives are just as magnetic and as harrowing as everybody else's.